If you're about 35 or 36 weeks pregnant, you're probably having a group B strep culture done at your office visit. If you've ever wondered what that really is about, Stay tuned. I'll talk about that today, coming up. Hey everyone, Dr. Wes Davis. I make weekly YouTube videos giving you the best evidence-based information to help you have the best possible outcome for you and your baby. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Okay, so a lot of folks uh, have been asking me this question in the office. What the heck is this group B strep test and why do I have to have it and what does it mean? So we're going to talk about that today. It turns out that about one-third of all moms will test positive for this particular bacteria called group B strep. It's a, a gram-positive organism that lives lives normally in the vagina and rectum of about one third of all pregnant moms. So to most pregnant moms, it is not a real risk of infection for them, although there are occasional infections from group B strep in moms. The real issue is with babies. The way we do this test is it's a vaginal and rectal culture. We just place a little, a little cultured uh, Q-tip in those areas and send that to the lab. And if the bacteria is isolated, we know within about a week that mom is positive. Another way you might know you're positive is from a first trimester urine culture, say at your new OB visit. That's a routine time for us to take a urine culture. And in a small percentage of cases, we will find the mom is positive for strep at that time. Now, when that's the case, we don't need to reculture you at 35 or 36 weeks. We're just going to consider you positive for this pregnancy. The other time that we would consider someone positive in really regardless of current uh, culture results is if you have a prior infant affected with group B strep infection. So not to say a mom who was previously group B strep positive but is negative this time around. Rather, it was a mom uh, that was positive and the baby was subsequently found to have an infection. In those cases, the risk is higher for the baby to be affected again. And so we just consider those moms positive and treat them in labor regardless of any culture results from this pregnancy. The typical antibiotic regimen is penicillin or something like penicillin. So a cephalosporin, so such as ANCEF as a good example. Now, there are people who are penicillin allergic, and the question is always, well, what about me if I have a penicillin allergy? The first question we're going to ask is, what is that allergic reaction? Because if it was just hives or a rash or something like that, then we're going to use uh, a cephalosporin such as ANCEF. These antibiotics are very similar in terms of their effectiveness against group B strep, and the likelihood of a cross-reaction from a penicillin allergic patient to ANCEF is probably 1% at the most. So we really don't worry about having having a problem at that point. The only people that we truly worry about who have a, a penicillin allergy are those that have a very severe reaction. If your reaction was anaphylaxis, you know, difficulty breathing, swelling in the throat, things like that, we don't mess around with those. Those are serious and there is a chance of cross-reaction with cephalosporins and we don't want to take that risk. So in those situations, if we know a mom had a prior anaphylactic reaction to penicillin, when that's the case, we're going to request sensitivity testing of the bacteria. So clindamycin is a second line antibiotic. However, there is a fair amount of resistance to clindamycin in group B strep nowadays. We test for it. If they're not if they're not resistant, we'll use clindamycin. If it is resistant, then we'll go to vancomycin, which there's not much group B strep resistance to vancomycin. So that's the typical third line agent if there was a legit anaphylactic type reaction. And the uh, bacteria was not sensitive to clindamycin, then we're going to move on to vancomycin. So uh, that's the kind of usual procedure. We need about four hours from the initiation of antibiotics until delivery to feel like the mom has received adequate antibiotic coverage. And if you get less than four hours, it's not the end of the world. They just watch those babies a little closer uh, to be sure there's no signs of infection. And typically they do fine. The other common question I'll get is, um, well, what if I just go so fast that I don't get four hours of antibiotics? That's okay. You know, generally speaking, the risk of infection is related to the duration of exposure. So if someone comes in, just has a baby really quick and didn't even have time to get antibiotics, the pediatrician is definitely going to watch that baby to make sure there's no signs of infection. But my experience is most of the time, if they weren't in labor for very long before they came to the hospital, that baby's going to be fine uh, because the duration of exposure was small. So we really worry the most about like prolonged labor, hours and hours. Those are the folks that's really important that you got your coverage uh, so that we know the baby's protected. Well, that's about all you really need to know about group B strep in pregnancy. It's just important to know you should be getting that culture around 34, 35, 36 weeks. You need to know those results. And then if you are positive, make sure you get the correct antibiotics during labor. And when that's the case, everything should turn out just fine. Thanks for watching again today. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.